So when we look at, um, you know, what we do in our daily practice, injectable is for everyone. It's for beautification, it's a common aesthetic request to enhance facial features. And this is what we do every day, starting from like, you know, my journey 20 years ago, almost 30 years ago, actually. We start with injecting, you know, um, very superficially in the interdermal and subdermal plane. And then we start to go very deep to correct the aging. And now we back again and doing more superficially. And look at injectable, what, what actually did it did to people all over the world. You see in the internet, you know, all the movie star, you know, you look how they change, how they develop. Do you like it? It looks exaggerated. It looks over augmented. And why? What happened? Maybe what we're trying to do, we try to put the younger features, you know, in the age collapse foundation. We just do the wrong thing, you know. We actually trying to put, you know, a, a younger face in an old collapse foundation. It's not gonna work. Don't let it this be you. Look fake weird, and very, very unnatural. And some people like to stay in app. They don't want to stay in reality. They want to look at yourself in just, you know, in, in applications. So, what is the trend? The trend is, there are so many people that say no to injectables, say no to fillers, say no to Botox, and focusing on treating the cells. Using other like a substance, stimulate skin cell regeneration and metabolic activities, and try to promote the tissue re regeneration by using the bio products, and get subtle corrections. You know, to not significantly alter the face, but rather just refresh, revitalize the current appearance. We have to differentiate these two words. Regeneration and biostimulation is not the same thing. The two concepts are related and involved in biological process to promote the healing and tissue repair, but is not the same. With the biostimulation, you use external factors the one that you have in your practice, you use the ultrasound, energy based device, lasers, chemical substance to enhance the natural uh, biological response to stimulate the synthesis or release of biological components, release good factors, cell, and proteins, while regeneration is different. It is a natural process of tissue regrowth that promote, <coughs> I'm sorry, promote tissue repair, regrowth, and restoration, that is synthesis of the new cells, synthesis of the new novel or cells of the uh, tissue which is, has a physiological functions. So these will evolve stem cells, growth factors, and other biological molecules. This is to stimulate the body's natural regenerative process. So this regeneration, if something is regenerative, it is actually biostimulatory. But if something which is biostimulatory doesn't mean that it's regenerative. And actually, we chipped from direct application of synthetic substance injection into the dermis to stimulate the body's natural regenerative process and that will call the aesthetic regenerative scaffolds. And we chip from just using the synthetic substance. We try to chip to this regenerative scaffold to create tissue regeneration, and that's what we are here today, talking about PDRN and PN. And it has different mechanisms of actions, um, as a adenosine A2A receptor agonist, 
role in salvage pathway for damaged DNA and stimulate P adipocyte fat. It actually giving a regeneration to the dermis, stimulate the fibroblasts, and stimulate the pre adipocyte fat, and having result improving in skin elasticity, thickness, wrinkles, hydration, pores, pigmentation, and recently, we're talking a lot more about volumization. So we use scaffold. Scaffold is important for regenerative process. It offers as a docking point and cross substance to cell precursors, to construct or to regenerate, to getting more than new cells and improve soft tissue augmentations without putting foreign body into your skin. And there are many kinds of uh, uh, natural, uh, many kind of scaffold. We have natural polymers, and polynucleotides is one of the natural polymers. And there are synthetic polymers. And the good thing about natural polymers is, it had main advantages that it had greater biocompatibility interactions with host cells. And that's why it has regenerative effect. And there are uh, articles, paper, comparison of the PN and hyaluronic acid fillers on the polyocular uh, regeneration. It is actually the same. I mean, it has the same efficacy, and actually it's even safer for periorbital rejuvenation. And recent publication from uh, Dr. Kim that we'll hear today, he will, uh, he mentioned about using the PN injection treatment for a volumization for fat atrophy to regenerate the fat tissue. That's why we're here today. We will listen to all of our speaker today talking about Regulant, the PN, the game changer in aesthetic medicine. I will mention about my theory, talking about it helps in retinal killer cutis regenerations. We know we age in all there. Change it in bone, change in soft tissue, change in muscles, and change in the skin. And we know, this is my theory, my concept, that we can lift, we can control the face, we can we can reduce the sag in the face by trying to strengthen the stronger fixed part on the lateral part of the face, creating smash lifting, and redefine the facial contour, reshaping and lifting. And it happens by the concept of treating the whole layer. And we know that the deep structures is important. It's the most Substantial inference, you know, culprit of aging. Deep structure, the bone, and the deep fat, and the smash support. Yes, this is on halogen to print. But we don't mention enough about vertical structure support, which is an important skin pillar of the retaining ligament. We talk, you know, people talk about a lot about, you know, important of retaining ligament, how we have to restore to uh, create back of uh, skin usefulness, but not mentioning enough about important retinal cuticles. It's actually the extension of retaining ligament. It's a portion of retaining ligament that's path through subcutaneous tissue, connecting retaining ligament to the upper part of the skin. And when we look at the retina cuticles, it is a 3D network component, and it has a role as a structure morphology of the maintenance of subcutaneous tissue to resist the tensile strain, to resist the gravitational force, to keep you know, all the structures in the, in the layer number two, keep it in place. So it actually acts as anchor of the skin to the underlying tissue. And we look into what is components in the subcutaneous tissue. It consists of two components. One is a fat, subcutaneous fat. The fat provides volume, 
And we know when we age, we have deflation because of, uh, we have atrophy of the fat cells. And we have retina cutis, which is a small fibrous strand binding the dermis to underlying mass. This gives a support. And this framework is actually a component of collagen fiber. And it acts as a scaffold to uphold and support the skin aspect of the muscles, connect everything. So retina cutis is important structure for facial lifting. We can't, we can't, we have to do the all layer, including this layer, because this layer it has importance as a structure which connect everything, uphold all the structures from the deep structures to the superficial structures. I mentioned about the importance of retinal cutis maybe like six, seven years ago in the IMCAS conference. And I believe that more and more that it really has, you know, influence in the aging. There is so many, um, uh, there's some publication talking about relationship between the retinal cutis skin ligament and sacking. You know, the degree of sagging increased with decreased retinal density. And elasticity of the skin decreased with decrease in RC density. So if we want to improve our elasticity, if we want to improve the skin strength, we have to improve this, retinal cutis. And we know that there is a deterioration of retinal cutis when we age, and the density is also affect the wrinkle depth. So when you age, when your skin sag, you have less retinal killer cutis. So my theory, the cause of aging, the cause of sagging on the face may be related to the RC structures. And also, there are a nice study talking about the uh, effect of PN and, uh, uh, on the human preadipocyte, PN, PDRN on the effect of preadipocyte. This is in vitro study. But look at this. This is the layer number two. What we can do in the layer number two to improve for regenerative layer number two? What we already you know, did in our practice, we can do a filler fat injection, we can do thread lifting. We do hypokinetic dermal injections, and we can do the PN fillers here with different mechanism of actions. So look at this. It's not only give biovitalization into the dermis. We know that it's promote growth activities of fibroblasts, fibroblasts in dermal layer. This is the way that we actually do in the past, you know, inject directly into the dermal layer. However, because it's a new concept, we know that the uh, PN can support a small fibrous of the RC, and it also affects on the human pre adipocyte, the two most component in the layer number two, in the retinacular cutis. So the treatment conceptual idea is the same. You know, we do a strengthening of the uh, lateral fixed part to create antisecting to reposition of the soft tissue, make the lateral part of it stronger, as in the um, original paper in 2018, that uh, improvement in the injection of the lateral part and the posterior temple fossa behind the hairline, it can help to improve the sagging. And this is how I do. You know, in the video, I show you how I do the PN. Inject in the, you see how superficial that actually I do, you can see the cannula while moving. And we regenerate the retina cutis on the lateral part of the face. And you can see the immediate lifting. And you can also do the, exactly the same thing that we actually do with the 
um, intradermal injection with a toxin, but using the PN to stimulate in superficial plane and in subdermal plane together in the same sessions. And this is before, and this is on the right side, and this is before injection also on the left side. You can see improvement of the face. You can see improvement in the jaw line, improvement necessarily before in the jaw, and improvement in the lower face and jaw line substantial. Again, this is one month. It looked refreshed. It looked revitalized. And it looked bright, the whole face, because this is regeneration. It's not just feeling the defect. It's not just feeling. It's regeneration. Again, another side, you see improvement. So I think, I believe, the PN can be used as a biofillers. It can create a strong structure of the land number two, the RC. It also can be a game changer in aesthetic medicine for regenerations. And I will end my talk, invite everybody for the DASU meeting, October 25th to 27th. And you can contact the IT Chem, who's a member of the Thai costume. You get a member prize. Thank you so much.